Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, um, yes, as we were, has been announced, today is the uh, Tirobhav of Srila Narutam Das Thakur, Narutam Das Thakur Mahasayi. Great personality, his life, his teachings, his the legacy he left in regard to what he did when he was here is quite immense. We can uh, speak a little bit about his life. It's quite voluminous. We'll see how much we can cover in the time that's available. <clears throat> well, we should also mention that uh, there are two things. There's Abhirbhav and there is Tirubhav. Uh, appearance and disappearance. We give more importance to the disappearance than we do to the appearance. Why? Because at that point, we understand what this great personality has done. And when they appear, we are anticipating through astrological knowledge, some great personality will come and do great work to spread, in this case, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Narutam Das Thakur is one of the greatest of the great. <laughs> For so many reasons, and we'll try to get a little bit of that. One of the reasons was his style of kirtan, which was unique. And then it was introduced by Srila Narutam. A little bit about the beginning of his life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, and many of the disciples, followers of Mahaprabhu, who are going into the area of Bangladesh, place where the now the Padma River is. When Lord Chaitanya got to the Padma River, he went into a type of ecstasy. And he expressed that ecstasy by calling out loudly, Naratam. Naratam, Naratam. The devotees had heard that before, but didn't give it so much importance. But this time, Lord Nityananda said to Lord Chaitanya, many times we hear you calling out the name of this Miss Naratam, but we don't know who is Naratam. Please inform us. Lord Chaitanya was happy to hear that. He said, soon, a great personality will come and he will spread my mission everywhere. You know, I've come to inaugurate the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Sri Harinam Sankirtan throughout the world. And Srila Naratam Das Thakur will be a great proponent He will not only spread the glories of chanting everywhere, but he will also revolutionize the style of kirtan that has never been given before. The bodhis along with Lord Nityananda became curious. Where is his new one? And Lord Mahaprabhu said, soon he will appear. Right after that, Lord Chaitanya took his bath in the Padma River. When he was bathing in the Padma River, the river started to overflow its banks simply by the presence of Lord Chaitanya. 
Lord Chaitanya could understand that Padma was reacting to his presence. And something happened. The Padma River changed colors. It was dark, very dark river. And now it became golden in color. Goranga Mahaprabhu had placed his transcendental effulgent form in, into Padma. And now she had changed colors. She was also Gora, or golden. Lord Chaitanya spoke to Padma, personified. Although she didn't appear in person, he spoke to her. And he said, A great personality will come soon and will take bath in your waters. I have left my pure prem in the waters of, in your waters. So when that person comes, you bestow upon him this Krishna prem. Padma was curious and she said, my dear Lord, how will I know? Lord Chaitanya said, you are experiencing my presence in the same way you will experience his presence. And as soon as you experience, then you will know. Hmm. Not long after that, that was in the year 1530, Three. Uh, right after that, 1534, Lord Chaitanya disappeared. In 1535, a great personality was born in a place called Katerigram. This personality was a very special personality. He was born as a son of a prince, a king, actually. His father's name was uh, let's see if I can remember D uh, Data. Let's see, he was Data, Krishna Data. <laughs> His father's name was Krishna Data. His mother's name was um, hmm. Let's see. His father's name was, yeah, his father's name was Krishna's Dutta, his mother's name was Narayani. And he had a brother later on born whose name was Purushottam Dutt. He was born on the full moon day. All auspicious signs were upon the body of the this great personality. After, after one year, it was the, uh, six months, I'm sorry, after six months, the name giving ceremony was organized. Krishna Dat being a, a king, he had great influence, so many followers, so many personal friends. They all came, great sages, saints, all appeared just to honor this child on the first grain ceremony. It's called Anaprast. This is done in our Krishna consciousness society as a regulation that on the fifth, between the fifth and seventh month, the child, especially it's mentioned actually six months for the boy and five months for the girl, this ceremony must be performed. And so a big festival was organized and so many great personalities appeared to honor Krishna Dutt. He was overwhelmed with happiness to perform the ceremony with the blessings of so many auspicious personalities present. The child was quite unique. He was very quiet. 
never cried. Never in his once was his, as a baby did he ever cry. I think mothers in, in general would think, wow, that would be a nice baby, never cries. <laughs> and, but he was always satisfied. It wasn't like it was something wrong. He was personally always self-satisfied, so he didn't feel the need for expression. The ceremony began, and the priest officiated the ceremony and did the yagya. And at one point, at the end of the yagya, now the grains were, were meant to be given to the child. And so it was prepared and given. And of course, we understand that the, the priest generally, or the most reputed of all of the great sages, the, uh, is requested to offer the grains. And so that was chosen. The offering was given. But Naratam Das Thakur would not accept the grain. They would push it towards his mouth. He would turn his face in the opposite direction. And as hard as they tried from different angles, they could not feed the child. Krishna Dot went into tremendous anxiety along with his wife Narayani. Everyone thought, oh, how inauspicious. The child is not receiving the grains. But there was one old Brahmin. He was there. And uh, he actually also was a great astrologer. He said, this child is very special. He's a great devotee of the Lord. And he will not eat ordinary food. <laughs> You're giving him ordinary grains. He will only eat what's offered to the deity. So they took heed to that took the grains, offered it to the deity, came back. And as soon as they again tried to offer the grains to Naratam, he immediately, eagerly took the grains and smiled. <laughs> Everything was blessed. And from that day on, his father said, he will only get Maha Prashadam from our house. <laughs> he grew up. There was an old Brahmin up and used to come every day just to see the child. And as he was growing up, he would speak to the child and tell him about great personalities. He would tell him about Lord Chaitanya. He would tell him about Srinivas Thakur, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. He would tell him about Jiva Goswami. He would talk about so many of the great personalities, Lord Nityananda. And Naratam became so absorbed and happy, eager, but at the same time, his mind was a little disturbed. He felt, oh, I have missed the opportunity for such great persons. But then he heard about this one person whose name was Srinivas Acharya, son of Gangadas Bhattacharya who later became Chaitanya Das <laughs> by the glory of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> um, so he became eager to meet Srinivas Acharya. So after some time, when he was still young, one day Lord Nityananda appeared to him in a dream. And he said, go to the Padma River. And so he took that sign as something very special. So his father was always concerned that he would, you know, he seemed like a restless child. And he was always hearing about great personalities. So it appears that he wanted to leave. And so his father arranged for his mother to, to watch him very carefully when he was gone. One day, 
one day when his father was gone, he tricked his mother and fooled her and escaped, went to the Padma River. And when he got to the Padma River, he immediately understood he was about, should take bath. He went into the Padma River. As soon as he went into the Padma River, the river started to churn, waves started to appear, water started over, overflowing the banks of Padma. And then Naratam Das Dakur's color, which was darkish, became golden. Its color changed. The prema that Lord Chaitanya had left in the Padma River now became the feature of Lord of Naratam Das Thakur's transcendental body. He went back home when he was a love six child. His parents wanted to him to marry. Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in a dream and said, go to Vrindavan. Lord Nityananda in a, dueta, in a, in a following dream told him, go to Vrindavan. Again, he took the opportunity and tricked his mother and he traveled, he traveled through the forest and came to Vrindavan. And then while he was traveling, when he would sleep at night, he had a dream. And in that dream, Lord Chaitanya said, you should take initiation from one great personality from Vrindavan. His name is Lokanath. Was go Lokanas Swami or Lokanath Goswami. So he traveled and came to Vishram Ram Ghat, went to Jamuna Mathura. When he was there, he met an old Brahmana. And the old Brahmana told him about Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. His eagerness to meet the Nupa and the, the Sanatan Goswami was very strong. When he appeared in Vrindavan, it was too late. Rupa and Sanatya Goswami had already, in fact, had just recently disappeared. His heart was broken. He wanted the darshan of Rupa and Sanatya Goswami, but he had missed it. They had just disappeared. But still, Srila Jiva Goswami recognized his great personality, and, and he also knew he would be coming. So he fell into the arms of the Jiva Goswami and Jiva Goswami instructed him. But Lord Chaitanya had to told him that uh, you should take initiation from Lokanath Das Goswami. But Lokanath Das Goswami had just, after one very beautiful festival in Narata, in, 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 in Vrindavan, he decided not to take any disciples. Although he was highly qualified, he felt, I am not qualified to be a guru. And this happened right after the disappearance of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Still, Naratam, instructed by the dream given by Lord Chaitanya, approached Narata, uh, Lokanath Swami fell at his feet, begged him to become. And uh, all Lokanath Swami said, you are more advanced than in I am. Lord Chaitanya has appeared to you. I am very fallen. And he left. He was not so happy. Lokanath Swami didn't respond. And in so many ways, it was obvious Lokada Swami was not interested, but he decided to serve Lokada Swami, even though he wasn't being accepted as this is guru, disciple. So Lokada Swami, early in the morning, he would go to the forest to take care of nature, and then he would go on and take bath and do his bhajan. So Naratam would come every day right after Lokanath Swami would leave and he would clean the place and organize it so nice. that when Lokanath Swami come, came the next day, he was amazed to see how everything was so different and so clean. 
But still, he didn't take interest. But then one day, after doing this for a long time, he started to think, someone is coming and cleaning this place, I can see. I'm going to find out. So after taking care of business one day, he hid behind a tree to see. And there it was, Lokada uh, Naratam Das Dakur started to clean the place with his hands sitting. And Lokana Squami was astonished. He was shocked. He cried out, you're a prince. You're a prince. Naritam said, I have left everything simply to serve you. But still, Lokana Swami didn't give him initiation. But then Lord Chaitanya intervened in a big way. And he appeared in a dream in Lokanath and he said, you should initiate him. He was very direct. And so taking the instruction of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his order, he initiated and that was his only disciple. And so we sing that song, Lokanath Lokir Ajivan. What is that? Uh, uh, what is that first line before that? He's the friend of the fallen. It's the ha ha prabhu kola doya deha moda padachai. Before that, Shiguru charana padma ke valaba vakati sadma bando muhi sarvadana mate. Yanhara prasadi bai. E baba tariyo yai. Krishna prapti hoi. Koite, Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya Chite Te Koriya Orkya, Arna Kariya Marayas, Shri Guru Charana Rate, E Se Untamagati, E Prasadi Porvi Sarva As. Chakshudan Dilo Ye, Janmi Janmi, Prabhu Se, Dibya Gyan, Hiride, Prakasita, Prema Bhakti, Yaho Hoite, Yidnaviya Vyasa Yote. Vede Gahe Yana Rasari, Shiguru Karuna Sindhu, Adama Janada Bandhu, Lokanath Lokera Jivan, Ahaha Prabhu Koda Doya, Dehamoda Padachaya, Ebiyasa Gusik Tribu One. Beautiful, beautiful song that we sing bhajan every day in glorification of the spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada said this bhajan is spiritually perfect, or he said shastrically perfect. What he meant that it's not only a bhajan, but it, it contains all of the conclusions of the shastras in that particular bhajan. And Prabhupada adopted that particular bhajan as his daily Guru Puja program. So he's saying, yeah, Lokanath, Lokera Jivan, because he's glorifying his spiritual master, Naratama is speaking about Lokanath Goswami Maharaj. Mm -hmm. uh, after staying in Vrindavan for some time, he learned scriptures from Jiva Goswami. He became very close friends with Srinivas Acharya and Duki Krishna Das, who later became Shamananda Goswami. These three personalities arranged by Jiva Goswami to take all of the writings of the six Goswamis, where there were one copy of each Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charita Vita, Rupa Goswami's Ujwala Nam Nilamani, Rupa Goswami's uh, Bhakti Rasana Samatu Sindhu, uh, Sanatan Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Um, many of the great personalities who had written, there was one copy of the book, and now was they were in, in <clears throat> Vrindavan. And so Srila Jiva Goswami had given them instructions, take these books along with this caravan, and I'll supply many guards. And you go to Navadweep, where there are many scribes, and have them copy each of the books 
in volume. So we can take these books and begin Sankirtan. And you'll see Jiva Goswami was one of the first persons to do Harinam Sankirtan with the books of the Goswamis. While they're on their way, they had to travel through very difficult places. And when they came to one place, there was um, the box, the books were in a big box and the box was being guarded by gar men along with driven by an ox cart. Uh, Jiva Goswami had given them instructions. And then of course, once they passed one particular province called Banavishnupur, there was one king called Birhambir. Birhambir would always employ astrologers to see who was approaching through his kingdom. And if there was some indication that the travelers were carrying great amounts of wealth, he would send his men to attack them, sometimes kill them and steal the wealth. This was the king of the providence. And so he did that at the time when the devotees were traveling through his kingdom, the astrologer said, yes, there are some travelers and they have a great treasure. Birhambir sent his men, but he didn't, he said one thing that he never said before. He said, don't create any harm, but somehow or other get that, get that treasure. One night when all the devotees had stopped to go to sleep, the guards were meant to stay awake and guard, but the guards fell asleep. The, that the men of Bishram, Bishram, Birhambir, they stole the books so easily. The next morning when they woke up, Srinivasacharya, Naratam Dasta Kaur, and Dukhi Krishna Das, Shamananda Pandit, they were, especially Srinivas, he was in charge of the whole entourage. He became really unhappy. The books are gone. What happened? There was only one copy of these books. Now they are gone. Then a voice came from the sky and Srinivas could hear the voice and no one else. The voice said, the king has stolen the books. Taking that as an instruction, he sent Naratam on to Ketari Gram to preach there. He sent Shamananda to Utkala to preach there. And he said, I will remain here. I will, I will locate the books. They didn't want to leave, but they followed his advice eventually. And um, finally, Srinivas met the king and somehow or other became a member of his uh, group of pundits that would give commentaries on discussions of the scriptures, and particularly Srimad Bhagavatam. Srinivas was speaking one day, and when he was speaking, he defeated or showed the, all the other pundits that uh, whatever you're saying about Bhagavatam is wrong. This is the correct understanding. And when the king heard his amazing explanation of Srimad Bhagavatam, he came to Srinivas and glorified him and said, please stay and become my chief pundit. And so he did. But then he asked Srinivas, is there something I can get for you that I can do for you? And he said, yes, actually I was traveling with a group and we had some books and now the books are gone. Find those books. He said, King said, I have the books. <laughs> oh, Srinivas was happily surprised. And he led them over to the box of books. And he showed him the books had been returned to Srinivas Acharya, and he was so happy. One of the most interesting things as described in this particular Leela is that when the books were packed, a Chaitanya Chari Tamrita, which is by Krishna Das Gaviraj Goswami, the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was packed on the bottom. But when he, when Shamananda, I'm sorry, when Srinivas Acharya opened the box, 
What did he see? He saw Chaitanya Charitamrita on the top. So, and so it's mentioned that Chaitanya Charitamrita is the cream of all Vedic literatures. So devotees should regularly read Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Prabhupada had put much, so much emphasis on the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam and the teachings of Lord Chaitanya in Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. It is the best. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, if you take all of the books in the world and you throw them into the ocean and there's only Chaitanya Charitamrita left, then there is no loss. Of course, we have Bhakti Vinod Thakur has made a similar statement in regards to Srimad Bhagavatam. So these two scriptures are the king of scriptures. Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Such a beautiful, Lord Ch and Srila Prabhupada's purports are unbelievably amazing. <laughs> so deep in philosophical teachings, so deep in the devotional mood of Lord Chaitanya. And of course, Srimad Bhagavatam is the king of all scriptures, as we sometimes say, Bhagavatam is Amalam Puranam. It is the most purest of all Vedic script, all Vedic Puranas. It is the best. These two, we put them side by side. Uh, they are the best of all scriptures. So, so, we have, so when we take time to read, and we should do that, we should emphasize these two books as our focus, Nara Chaitanya Charitamrita and also uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. The life of Naratam Das Thakur, Naratam longed to travel to Navadweep. She traveled by foot on the outskirts of Navadweep. Now we're switching over to Naratam now. Uh, he had a vision when he came to the outskirts. He saw the town of Navadweep and in every house, he saw people joyfully chanting and glorifying Lord Chaitanya. Somehow he was led by that vision to the house of Lord Chaitanya. And then while he was in that vision, he saw Lord Chaitanya and all his associates dancing in kirtan. After some time, the vision vanished and he felt completely distressed. Just around that same time, one personality approached him. His name was Suklambara Brahmacharya. He embraced Naratam. He said, I've been waiting for you. He took, then he took Naratam and he took him to all the nine islands of Navadvipa and showed him all of the holy places and the pastime places of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That particular um, uh, yatra by Sukla Brahma Brahmachari was the same yatra that Srila, uh, that Narat, I'm sorry, that Nityananda Prabhu, Nityananda, Lord Nityananda took Jiva Goswami on the same. And that same pattern of traveling through the different holy islands is today in the Navadweep Mangala Parikram, Mandala Parikram. It is the most auspicious. After visiting all the Nile Islands and coming in, coming in contact with all the holy places and pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, Naratam then went to Jagannath Puri. In fact, Sukhumbhara Brahmachari said, go to Jagannath Puri. The devotees are waiting for you. On his way, he stopped in Shantipur. He met a Chutananda, the son of Advaita Charya. He heard from Chutananda all about his father, Advaita Charya. 
he visited Ambika Kalna and met Ridoy Chaitanya. At Kadarha, he met Mahapep, Mahav, Mahesh Pandit along with his intimate associates. Mahesh Pandit was a, was a great devotee of Lord Nityananda. Um, Ma Mahesh Pandit took him and brought him to Janava and Visuddha. They were still on the planet. That Janava was the actual consort of Lord Nityananda along with Visuddha. They were co-wives of Lord Nityananda. They were Revati and Kalindi in, in Krishna Lila as they now appeared in Gaur Lila as Janava and Visuddha. Falling at the feet of these two blessed ladies, he worshiped them. He received a blessing by Janava. Janava told him, you will make the entire world Krishna conscious. Followed by thousands of people on his way to Puri, he became so popular after receiving the blessings of Sri Janavi Devi, Janava Devi. When he came to the outskirts of Puri, he met was met by an old Brahmana. The old Brahmana says, we are waiting for you. Everyone is waiting for you. He was surprised to hear that. So first he, he took him to render, Narendra Sarovar, where Lord Chaitanya and his associates used to daily, when Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri, he would perform water sports with his devotees in a very playful leela. After that, he met Gopinath Acharya, Kanai Kuntia and Siki Mahiti. In fact, the three of them were walking along the road together, and all of a sudden, all three of them felt simultaneously ecstatic. They could understand Naratam must have a come. So they were looking around, and sooner or later, they met Naratam, and later they took him to the Jagannath temple. He took his darshan from the Garuda Stamba and he received Prashadam Garlam. Then he went on his way to, 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 to Gopinath Temple and he sat at the place where Gadahar Pandit used to meditate daily or worship. Um, he also was taken to the seashore of the Samadhi Mandir of Srila Haridas Akur. Namacharya Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. After that, they took him to the house of Gopinath Acharya, the cousin of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and one of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There he was given a special room to sleep, but he could not sleep. His love for the devotees, his love for the Lord was so strong he could not fall asleep. And finally, he went to sleep. And when he, after falling asleep in, he, in a dream, he saw Jagannath Puri, the city of Puri in its full glory in the card festival with Lord Chaitanya and all his associates dancing in ecstasy in front of the cards of Lord Jagannath. He saw then cut the bud Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Sachi Mata, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Ramananda Roy, Sarup Dhanbhatar. And he was watching in the dream, his own dream, seeing himself watching the dream. And in the dream, finally, Lord Chaitanya broke from the kirtan and came directly to Naradam and came and took him by the hand, spoke sweetly. He said, you will be empowered to develop a, a style of kirtan, which will be very dear to my heart. Then Lord Chaitanya took him, told him to go to back to his home, to Kekteri Gram, and preach Krishna consciousness. And then the dream vanished. After waking up from the expect of the dream, he decided to immediately leave and he headed on to Kateri Gram. On his way, he saw an old Bra the same old Brahmin who he met on the way in, and he served him nicely. He came to the place called Nishringapur, a place where Shamananda Pandit was used to preach or did preach. 
he was embraced by Shamananda, and Shamananda spoke Krishna Kata. While they were together, Shamananda and uh, um, Naratam, Naratam said to, to Shamananda, go to Jagannath Puri and meet all the devotees and give them life. Because the devotees, although they were there, not all of them, they were feeling the separation of Lord Chaitanya. And therefore, there was a certain, there was a sadness amongst the devotees because of the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. On his travels, he visited Sri Kanda. He met Raghunandana Thakur, the son of Narahari Sakur. I'm sorry, he had the head of Narahari Sakar. He also met uh, Raghunandana's guru, Narahari Sakar, Narahari Sakur. After meeting Narahari Sakur, simply his whole life was, was in bliss. Narahari Sakur was very, very intimate associate of Sri Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu. And then he placed his feet upon the head of Naratam Das Thakur and empowered him to spread Krishna consciousness. After this last meeting, Naratam became overwhelmed with ecstasy, could an only cry. And soon after that, Narahari Sakar left the planet. We see in the Gorarti, and sometimes it's depicted in a picture, there's one personality fanning Lord Chaitanya with a charmer fan. Nada Hari Ari Kori Chamaradulam Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Goshari Gaya. So we sing that, and you'll see. Narahari Sakura is there fanning Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He went to Katwa, the place where Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, and he met Yadunanda Acharya, who was a principal disciple of Gadadhar Das. And he also met an associate of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda of Gadadhar Das. He told, and he gave him the same instructions, go to Kateri Gram. Uh, so on his way to Kateri Gram, this time he stopped at Ekka Chakra, the place where Lord Nityananda appeared and the place where the Pandavas spent um, one year in exile. Or yeah, one year in exile at Ekka Chakra. When he was there, he started to chant Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda's name with great love. Lord Nityananda appeared to him, but he appeared to him as a disguised Brahmana. And he said to Naratan, let me take you to the holy places of Ekka Chakra. Uh, really attracted by this old Brahmana who was actually Lord Nityananda in disguise, he was led from place to place. He saw the childhood place, the home, the birthplace, the place where Lord Nityananda took his first grains, the place where the mysterious sannyasi who came and took Lord Nityananda away, the place where Padma, Padmavati shed tears, which later on became a great gat, the place where the father of Lord Chaitanya, I mean, Lord Nityananda fell down and that was Hadai Pandit and the place where the, the, the townspeople lamented. All of these great holy places were described in detail by this old Brahman who was actually Lord Nityananda himself. Then the old Brahman disappeared. All of a sudden he was there and he was gone. And then Naratam felt great separation. He couldn't understand why. Why am I feeling so much separation from this old Brahmana? But then the old, old, old Brahmana then reappeared to him 
and transformed himself into Lord Balaram and then into Lord Na Nityananda. And he said to him, you are the best devotee. Return to Ketri Gram and compose songs and chant Kirtan. Falling at the feet of actually Lord Nityananda, uh, he composed himself after some time and headed on his way to Ketri Gram. Finally, he arrived. He 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 arrived in Ketri Gram. When he got into the area of Ketri Gram, uh, he had a vision, and it was Lord Chaitanya. And in this vision, it was uh, there was this place, and there was this man who owned this go-down. So he met this man. And in the dream, Lord Chaitanya told him that my deity is in the bottom of this go-down. So please bring me out and establish my worship. But when the man who was the owner of the go-down, he was very rich, he said, no, no, you can't go down there. It's a very dangerous place. There are many snakes and anyone who tries to go there, they are attacked by the snakes. No one can go. Naratam simply smiled and he went down. As Soon as he went down, all the snakes came out and disappeared. He found the deities. He took these deities with him and then he met Vishnu Priya there. The uh, um, no, it was actually a deity. I'm sorry, it was a deity of Vishnu Priya. It was also there, and he, uh, along with having other deities coming from different areas, devotees were coming. He he spoke to his cousin Santosh Dutt and said. Please arrange a big festival. We will invite all of the Vaishnava. Santosh Dot was the heir to, this, to the family treasury. And so he had so much. And he created a very wonderful festival. He, he actually constructed, had constructed these houses where the devotees could reside, plus many, many big places for stocking grains and other food items, along with a huge kirtan hall and other places and a small temple. And then he invited so many. After some, so many days, Srinivas Acharya came along with his disciples, Ramachandra Puri, they came. You'll see in that song that we sing every day in uh, Navi, in where? In uh, Mayapur. It says, uh, Ha ha Prabhu Kota Doya Deha Mori Padachaya. Ha ha, what is that? Uh, Srinivas Acharya Naratam Das Thakur in the last line. Shri Guru, uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Doya Koda Mohude Toma Bina Kedayalu Jagat Sam Sahade. The song goes on. Ha ha. What is that? Last, the last line to the song. Who can remember the last line? The last line of that song. Oh, say again. Doya Koro Shri Acharya Prabhu Shri Nivas Ramachandra Dasakohi Ramachandra Sangama 
Narottam. Okay, Narottam Das, yeah. He glorifies Srinivas Acharya and Ramachandra Kaviraj in that particular song. In that festival, Janava came all the way from Kadahar, along with many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda that were still on the planet. They came from Jagannath Puri, they came from Vrindavan, they came from Navadweep, they came from everywhere just to honor this festival, which is the glorification of Lord Chaitanya's disappearance. This was 50 years after the disappearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was the first Gaur Purnima festival. And there were, there were other deities that were carved. In fact, uh, devotees were giving services to carve. So there were five more deities altogether. There were six deities, each of the deities were given the name by Naratam Das Thakur. Srinivas Acharya performed the Abhishek. Boka was offered. Kirtan began by Srila Naratam Das Thakur. Naratam Das Thakur was surrounded by all of the Kirtan associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There were many karto players. There were many Murdanga players. He began with a small pair of kartals and very softly, sweetly singing. Gradually, as he was chanting the mantras, he was the buildup of the speed was increasing. Finally, at one point, the Vadangas came in, and the devotees were all garland at that time. Kirtan became deeper, then Naratan danced. Everyone danced. And then finally, not finally, but at one point, something the Kirtan, when it reached such a height of ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, the entire Panchatattva, along with many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya who had disappeared, reappeared in that kirtan to dance to the kirtan sung by Srila Naratam Das Thakur. And the kirtan went on and everyone saw them. It wasn't a vision. It wasn't a dream. It was an actual appearance by Lord Chaitanya in person, and he danced in kirtan after having been gone for 50 years. That kirtan continued to go on and on and on. It's described in Naratam Vilas. It's a very nice, lengthy description of that kirtan. What was going on as the devotees were feeling so much ecstasy, and they were all crying amazed to see their relatives, friends of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his associates in the kirtan. And the kirtan just continued. Naratam stayed fixed and chanting the glories of Lord Chaitanya. Finally, at one point when the kirtan reached a height where it was impossible to go any higher, it appeared that everyone was in so much ecstasy they would die. <laughs> that, that Lord Chaitanya and, and all his associates who had appeared with him, they all vanished. And then, of course, right after that, the, there was a big festival cooked and organized by Janava Devi. And then, of course, um, I have another, I mean, I could speak for another hour on Naratam Das Thakur, but I'm sure some of you won't be able to stay. But I'll speak about his disappearance. After some time, Naratam, of course, he became very popular as a great preacher. He was also criticized. But uh, he was feeling great separation. He had heard that Srinivas Acharya had left, left the planet. And also his very dear friend, uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj. So he was feeling separation and he contacted a high, a high fever. And, and so he sat three days with that fever in silence. And then at one point, there was no more life in his body. Simply sitting in meditation, feeling separation from the, his great associates, he left. Then everyone was overwhelmed with 
lamentation, but then they had to they had to continue on. So they arranged for a funeral pyre to be built. Now Naratam Das Thakur had created, not created, but there were people who were envious of him, who didn't like his preaching. He was preaching to Brahmanas, although he was not born in a Brahmana family. And at that time, that was considered to be heresy. He was a Kayasta. Sometimes Kayastas are seen as sutras. And he was preaching to Brahmanas <laughs> and making them fully Krishna conscious. So some other Brahmanas became envious of him. So they also appeared during the time of his his uh, uh, funeral pyre, they placed his body onto the funeral pyre. And then the envious Brahmins came. Now, everyone is there, the ceremony is about to begin and then the envious Brahmins start to speak their poison. And they spoke loud enough so too many of the disciples could hear. Now he is dead. Now he is dead. And so they start speaking very negatively. Many of the disciples were feeling unhappy. These Brahmanas at the disappearance festival of Naratam Das Thakur, and they were speaking such poison. They could, their ears were being filled with all this garbage. So they started to pray and they prayed to Naradam, please save us. And Naradam did something. He was laying on the funeral pile and he just rose up. <laughs> he came back. <laughs> and when he came back, a golden thread, a golden sacred thread, Burmina Brahman thread appeared on his body. Everyone saw it. He's back. <laughs> the Brahmins who were there who were full of criticism were shocked. They couldn't understand what happened. They realized they were offenders. So they fell at his feet and surrendered to him and became his disciples. Naratam took them to Ketri, to Gretri and gave them prasadam, instructed them in philosophy and gave them an all initiation, a whole group of Brahmanas. He was very merciful to them. But Naratam, although he came back and he was back and he, again, he was active, but then after a few days, his heart again was overwhelmed with separation. So one day he told two of his disciples, Ganga Narayan, Bhattacharya, and Ramakrishna, he told them, he said, take me to the Ganges. So they took him to the bank of the Ganges and he said, come with me. So they walked into the Ganges and when they got waist deep, he said, I want you to massage my body with the water of the Ganges while I'm here standing in the Ganges. And he said, and then he told them, he said, whatever happens, don't stop. Please don't stop. So they started to pour the Ganga water on the body of Naratam. And as they were putting the water on and massaging it, Naratam's body was disappearing. It was melting. It was turning into milk. And after some time, they continued and his body completely merged into the Ganges in the form of milk. And of course, it's understood that one of Naratam's main services in the spiritual world is that he would cook milk for Radha and Krishna. He is a very special Manjari. His name is Champak Manjari in Goloka Vrindavan. So that was the disappearance of Srila Naratam Das Thakur as he, his body simply took on the substance of milk and merged into the Ganges water. 
So you can see, and this is not an ordinary personality. This should not have come past that far. His preaching, his prayers, the uh, many of the songs that he wrote and written were now introduced by Srila Prabhupada as a regular thing in our Krishna conscious society. So many beautiful, beautiful bhajans in glorification of Radha and Krishna, and especially in glorification of Gornitai. Now, Lord Narottam Das, that core was just absorbed in writing bhajans. And he also wrote one beautiful book, Prema, Ch Pr 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 Prema Chandrika, and it describes the glories of Lord Chaitanya's Shikshastika prayers and also the glories of Radha and Krishna. A beautiful book, Prema Chandrika, along with his. Um, composition of hundreds and hundreds of bhajans in glorification of uh, Lord Chaitanya and the great souls. So this is a little bit, I, we left out a very significant part of his life, but this is a little bit about the glories of Srila Narottam to Das Thakur. Today is his disappearance day, a very special day for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. To remember this great soul, remember what he taught us and learn from the legacy he gave us and use it in our life to advance in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That was beautiful. You shared so many pastimes of Narottam Nastako. Thank you so much. Maharaj, you have time for questions because we already passed um, 10 minutes. I am fine with questions if, if the devotees are eager to hear, to ask. Mm -hmm. Sure, Maharaj, yes. So I request devotees, uh, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Nabhanath. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you Guru Maharaj for sharing uh, this beautiful pastime of Narutam Das Thakur. Uh, absolutely uh, one of the very favorite uh, Vaishnava for my, because he was an example of serving a spiritual master, whether book distribution, or writing bhajans and glorifying senior Vaishnava. I like whenever I go to books distribution, I like I got personal uh, inspiration from him because I heard in one of the uh, your class, like when you also mentioned last year, that uh, when he used to go, like he, Shyamananda, and uh, Shinivas Acharya uh, together for book distribution, and there were not many books written. So somebody asked, then he has to write on his own or like these three of them, like they will write book and then they will give that book like on his own. So for us, it's a big mercy, uh, like blessings that we have already got these books, just need to pass it on. So that's a... Yeah, that is the mercy of the great souls is the knowledge they left us in the form of these transcendental books. So Guru Maharaj, I have two questions here, just... Uh, one very small question. One, you mentioned uh, he in uh, he was Champak Manjari uh, in uh, uh, spiritual world. So Champak Manjari is he same as Champak Lata who was Ashtasaki? I think they are two different. Uh, that's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a different. That's that's a she's Champak Gopi. She's Gopi. And Gopis and Manjaris are two different classes. Mm -hmm. He's Champaka, Champaka Manjari. Yeah. And his service was to cook, main service was to cook milk for Radha and Krishna. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which so is most favorite to them. And so when you're cooking milk, you can remember how dear this service is to Radha and Krishna. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj, there's another meditation you have told. So very good. 
<laughs> thank you very much guru maharaj guru maharaj i have just one last question uh, i know we are running late for you but uh, um, when you said when we need to meditate of course there are so many things and in fact now you told when we are preparing milk as a bhoga then we can remember him and but like just for today um, like i think the better way i feel that we can just do uh, like sing bhajans what he has written uh, when we go to home satsang like we are doing home satsang every day in different different devotees home so is, is mm-hmm. that something guru maharaj or something other than that can be better service to meditate and glorify narottam das yeah that's actually a a feature of vaishnav culture is to come together and do bhajans and the bhajans of bhakti vinod thakur bhajans of narottam das thakur the are the feature that we focus on these bhajans yeah uh we were doing that there was, i've done it for at different times in different places having bhajan nights and the you gather the devotees and you choose a series of bhajans and then you sing one of the bhajans together and some devotee will maybe read the translation and maybe also comment a little bit on the philosophy of this of these bhajans mm-hmm. these bhajans are deep in bhakti really really deep mm-hmm. uh well lord uh shrila prabhupad liked one particular bhajan uh what was that it was by narottam das thakur to nitai pada kamala guru maharaj uh not that particular one this one was Shri uh, Devi, are you there? Yeah, no, it's not Radha Krishna Pranamore, although that is that is a beautiful, beautiful bhajan. It is. Uh, is this Hari Harai Nama, Krishna Yadavai Nama, Guru Maharaj? No. No. Um, if you ne- say it, I'll get it. Uh, my mind is a little forgetful this morning <laughs> i can't remember too many things today uh uh oh my it's, it's deep it's a very deep bhajan what i shall i share the list of his bhajans uh, on the screen for you yeah narottam das the core let's see Oh Hari Hari Vipale that's it that's the one Prabhupada like Hari Hari Vipale Hari Hari Vipale go janam ainu gon manusana janam apaya radha krishna nabadiya janiya sunia visai kainu goloka prema dan hari nam shankirtan ratina janmilo kena tai samsara vishanale divinisha hi ajwale judaite na koi nu upa for gender nandana ye sachi sutta hoilo se malaram hoilo nita dina hina chatta chila hari nama udarila tar shakshi jagan mahamara ha ha prabhu nanda sutta vrishabana sutta chutta koruno kororo ehi baro narathama dasa koi nakali ho ranga poi toma bina ke ache amar yeah propad this was propad's favorite bhajan when he was asked by one of his leading disciples jamuna devi shila propad what is your favorite bhajan he said hari hari vipale janama goi this is the one he immediately responded
So this is one of the many wonderful, deep, and transcendental knowledge bhajans by Srila Narottam Das. And that was a unique feature of Narottam. His bhajans would have the complete siddhanta of Vaishnav philosophy encapsulated in his bhajans. He could write not only glorifications, but they were always very much in line with the scriptures, which is really <laughs> practically impossible to do for any ordinary person or even a great person. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. It's really helpful. You made that day. Thank you very much. Please, please, if you haven't read, please read Narottam Vilas. It's worth reading. My god sister uh, Sitala, the wife of Harisari, has penned a beautiful version of Narottam Vilas, taking the original Narottam Vilas by Narahari Sarkar, expanding on it. Uh, it's amazing. I, when it first came, just before it came out, I got an advanced copy. And I just was absorbed. I couldn't stop reading it. The way she presented it was so uh, expert in bringing our, our attraction into reading more and more and more and more. So Narottam Vilas, uh, the version by Sitala is so nice. Of course, if you can get the original version by Narahari Sakkar, that is, you know, that is also perfect. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Oh, devotees, anyone else would like to share any comments, realizations, or ask any questions? I don't see any more questions, Maharaj. Okay. Is Srimati there? Well, she's not here today, Maharaj. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop and we'll see you all tomorrow with our continuation of Damodar Leela. Thank you so much, Maharaj. For your time and thank you. Thank you. Chila Naratam Das Dakur Ki Jai. 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 Chila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your class. Samadeva Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hari, 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 Hari. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.